Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this lighthouse using a photograph for reference by Jason Gilman on Pixabay. Um, the, the link for the photo is below. Um, the photo and um, a copy of this line sketch is available um, as an extra on my Patreon channel as well. So follow the link if you're interested in that. So the first thing I've done is I've taped my Saunders Waterford cold pressed 140 pound paper to my board with decorator's masking tape and my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees. Um, I've simply sketched out the lighthouse and I've um, sketched in where I want my waves to be breaking against the back of it. And now I'm wetting the sky but I'm cutting around the lighthouse and the area of um, the wave, the breaking waves, um, and leaving that dry. I'm only going to be using three colours today, cobalt blue, raw sienna, and Payne's grey. So I'm first of all putting in a very pale wash of raw sienna, just to um, take away from the white in the sky area so that that should hopefully give me a bit more contrast um, for the white spray of the waves. And then in with the cobalt blue for a nice fresh blue sky. This is my large bamboo harky brush. Um, it's just a strange little sort of goat hair brush, wash brush that I bought from eBay quite a long time ago. I've seen them for sale on Amazon, um, AliExpress and eBay. And if you do a search for um, bamboo harky brush, you should be able to find something similar. So I'm just getting in this pale wash for the sky, painting it wet in wet coming in and getting some paint across the sea area as well but making sure that I keep my wave crests and lighthouse unpainted. The next brush is uh, my small squirrel mop and I really like this brush just using it clean and damp to soften up edges and that's the most that's what I use this brush for the most. So back to the harky brush and just smooth out the sky a little bit just where it needs maybe just a little bit of blending. Now I'm mixing some raw sienna with the cobalt blue to introduce a slightly sort of greener um, touch to it for this um, quite sort of turbulent water um, in the foreground in front of the lighthouse. So I'm just dotting it on with the tips of the brush and putting brush strokes here and there. I'm just trying to build up a sort of underpainting that will give me something um, an interesting sort of mid-tones to work on. The same colour across for the uh, sea behind the lighthouse. I'm not looking for anything particularly exact here at this point. I'm just roughing in, um, as I say, all these mid-tones and then I'll go in with detail. The unpainted paper will be my lightest lights. Um, these are my mid-tones and then the detail that I put in at the end will be my darkest darks. This Saunders Waterford paper that I'm using is what's known as their natural white. Um, so it's not as bright as the one that's called high white. It's sort of quite a, a creamy colour. So if I need to at the end, I may go in with some white gouache. Not too much, but just enough to highlight these breaking waves a bit more. Just dabbing out a little bit with a tissue here and there around where I want my breaking waves. And that just gives me these nice sort of soft and hard edges trying to make sure that around the lighthouse it's not too symmetrical looking where the water is just bursting out from behind it. Now I'm going to leave it all to dry. Now 
Now once it's completely dry, I'm going to mix up quite a rich mixture of my cobalt blue with a bit of um, the raw sienna in it and a thicker, drier mixture of paint. And I'm going to use my half inch flat brush and carefully drag it across the horizon line, keeping it nice and straight. If it wobbles a little bit, I don't mind, I can straighten it up later. So this darker paint for the sea behind the lighthouse will help to push the lighter breaking wave spray um, forward and make it look sort of brighter and lighter. So this is quite important to get this blue, um, not too dark, but dark enough to counter change nicely with the breaking waves. If you put a dark colour against a very pale colour, it will make the pale colour um, look paler and vice versa. Keeping my brush strokes horizontal, I'm leaving some areas with the underpainting showing through so I've get, got, got some sort of variation of tone. I'm working quite quickly because I don't want the paint to dry too much because I need to go in with my squirrel mop and soften around those edges again. I don't want hard edges uh, where the sea spray is. I want it all still to be really, really soft. So I'm taking great care with my edges here. I think the edges in this painting are very important. Um, I mustn't forget the little bit of um, sea that is just showing over here on the left. Again, that needs softening down as well. As I've been softening back with the squirrel mop, I've picked up some pale paint on it. So I'm now going to use that and carefully cut round um, and put a bit of shadow into the breaking wave right up next to the lighthouse. So I'm cutting around the lighthouse and then softening the edges of the shadow um, to give that sort of lovely sort of random um, water spray look. The same on the other side. And now I've dipped into some slightly darker paint, which is just that mixture of cobalt blue and uh, raw sienna, but still quite watery, but a bit darker. And that just puts that tiny bit more um, tone into the breaking wave area, but without overdoing it. I'm still trying to keep as much of that white paper as possible, but get some shadow in there too. Now I've added my third colour into the mix, a bit of Payne's Grey to make it nice and dark and I'm going to use my flat brush to put in some nice dark choppy shadows of, of water and waves across the foreground. Um, once I've spread these across, leaving lots of the underpainting showing through, um, I shall soften back again with the squirrel mop so it all blends in nicely but gives me some nice choppy shadows. Using pure Payne's Grey, I'm dropping in the really dark um, jetty or whatever it is, headland, um, that the lighthouse is built on. It looks like a jetty um, and so I'm just going to suggest it by putting in this very dark um, line that's kind of straight across the top, but I'm going to soften it. Um, along the bottom make it look quite random so that I can suggest uh, the waves lapping up and breaking against it as well.
hope you can see that now the darks are going in, it's starting to bring the painting to life a little bit more. And now I've got the base of the lighthouse um, roughed in. Um, I shall use the same Payne's Grey mixture, nice dark mixture to, um, to just get these doors in and then I'll get some of the windows and the details in. There's a little balcony across there with a fence so I'm just going to indicate that simply using the tips of the flat brush. Now I've got a small calligraphy brush and I'm just going to rough in the windows that I penciled in earlier. the shadow um, just underneath the um, the light and the t light tower um, and just the railings I think those are three little round windows or portholes so I'm going to indicate them There's some steps down this side, which you, but you can see um, one of the windows through the steps. So that's what I've just put in there. I'll put the steps in later. Just a few indications of maybe some sort of lines of brickwork or wiring or something like that that's on the building. Something and nothing really, just to add interest so it's not just a very bland um, wall. Going to let that dry and then I shall mix up a very watery mixture of raw sienna with a little bit of cobalt blue in it, very watery, and pull it down over the lighthouse with the flat brush. I don't mind if the paint runs a bit because that will help to simulate the look of weathering on the lighthouse. bit of shadow under the lighthouse just um, allowing just dropping in a bit more paint into the wet lighthouse structure it's an interesting lighthouse it's not a round lighthouse the walls are um, sort of flat it's a, a sort of oblong tall rectangle not sure where it is the photo on Pixabay didn't have any details as to the location that's just softening back a little bit with the tissue, again, to keep that weathered look. Again, with the small calligraphy brush, putting in um, that sort of pointed roof, the cap on the light. I'm nearly finished and I've got my um, Matthew Palmer, it's a tree and foliage stippling brush and I've dipped it into some nice thick white gouache almost straight from the tube and I'm going to see if I can just bring out a little bit more white, a bit more impact, let's go in closer so that you can see. Um, just a little bit more added to the spray. I don't want to overdo this. A little bit of um, you know, highlighting goes a long way with the watercolour painting, I think. A 
and I'll bring some into the foreground and those breaking waves that are breaking over the jetty as well. And I think that's looking okay. Maybe just a bit more there. Again, being careful not to have things looking too symmetrical. Keeping things nice and soft, but I want there to be plenty of movement in it. So it's just a little bit of white gouache across the foreground water um, just to pull up a few little highlights and bits of foam on those sort of um, those rough waves and soften back with a tissue. And I think that's just about done. Um, I'll remove the tape and have a look at it and that's when I'll be able to look at it with a fresh pair of eyes. Um, with a nice clean white border and that will show me whether or not I need to do anything else to it. I'm in two minds as to put a few sort of highlights into the distant water um, so I need to look at it carefully and see whether it needs a bit of white gouache there just to show those sort of um, rough choppy sea in the background. So I can see that I need to get that sort of ladder in on the side of the lighthouse and um, maybe darken up the doorways a bit more, um, put a second layer of Payne's Grey on them just to get them nice and dark and really draw the eye to the focal point there. And then just a little bit of something and nothing around the base of the lighthouse. Just to break up the flatness of that area a bit. And finally, I've decided that I will use the tips of the this little flat brush to drop in a few very faint little... Um, wave crests in the distant water just to um, to link the rough sea at the back with the rough sea at the front. And I think I'm happy with that. So here's the finished painting. Um, I really enjoyed painting it and it's nice to get sort of rough sea but still a nice bright blue sky as well and have those lovely breaking waves up against the side of the lighthouse with the contrast of the jetty really showing them off. Thanks so much for watching. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel and I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.